In this video, you'll find one of the four best ETFs that you can buy and hold forever in your TFSC. I will give you four different funds that have some great potential of growth and some great tax advantages to be held into a TFSC. But first, for those that wouldn't know what is a TFSC, let me explain to you what are the main characteristics of this kind of account and how you can personally maximize it. A TFSC stands for a tax-free savings account and as its name is saying it, every kind of gain that you will make into this account will be tax-free. However, one important point about it is that you will not be taxed on Canadian investment. Unfortunately, if you're making some foreign revenue, let's say some US dividend revenues in your TFSA, well, in that case, you'll be taxed in the US on your dividend income. For example, let's say that you have some Microsoft shares that are giving to you some quarterly distribution from their dividends. It means that there will be a certain amount that will be deducted from the distribution of the dividends from the US government taxes. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't put any kind of foreign revenue into your TFSA. Because even if you're paying a certain taxation, if you're able to achieve some higher performance, at the end of the day, you'll be the big winner of it. And now let's check out what is my pick number one. The first ETF that I've decided to include on that list is the iShare S&P TSX Index ETF with the ticker XIU. This fund tracks the S&P TSX 60, which is the index tracking the 60 largest Canadian companies in terms of valuation on the Canadian TSX market. Obviously, you can find companies as RBC, TD, Enbridge, and CN as some of the biggest holdings of this fund. And as you can see within that ETF, the financial sector is well represented. In fact, as you've been able to see throughout my ranking of the five largest Canadian banks, the financial sector is the most important one in the Canadian market with about 35% of the total ETF. But you can also see that the energy, the materials, and the telecommunication sectors are also super important. And what is really interesting about all of these sectors is that they are really some defensive sectors. And in recession's time, as we are currently, those sectors are super interesting because they are usually the most performing sectors during those times. And with a great distribution of about 3.25% of distribution per year, this could be a great way for the holders of this fund to receive some interesting cash flow from the dividends of the different companies. And since you're holding this massive distribution that is considered as some dividend income in your TFSC, you can have some massive tax efficiency advantages from it, especially knowing that the dividend income is way more tax here in Canada compared to the capital gain. So you will save a lot of tax from holding this kind of ETF in your TFSC. And for a fair MER of about 0.18% per year of fees, which represent about $18 per $10,000 invest, this fund has returned a great 8.62% on average per year on a 10 years period. Also, by keeping a medium risk rate, which is due to the fact that the Canadian market, as I told you earlier, is less risky compared to another market like the US S&P 500 market. So this kind of ETF could be interesting for you if you are trying to look for some great dividend companies that will help you to offset the different losses that you could have seen throughout a recession. But talking about the American market, my second ETF is the famous Vanguard S&P 500 index ETF with the ticker VFV. This ETF is basically the Canadian equivalent of the famous VOO ETF, which tracks the performance of the S&P 500 index, which is basically an index composed of the 500 biggest American companies in terms of valuation. So companies like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, and Tesla are all some of the biggest holdings of this fund. It also means that the information technology sector is the biggest sector of this fund with about 27% of the total ponderation, followed by the healthcare, the consumer discretionary, and the financial sector. As a Canadian, this kind of fund could be pretty interesting since you're holding an ETF in Canadian dollars, meaning that if you're selling this ETF, you will not have any kind of capital gain to pay. But unfortunately, because you're holding some American stocks within this ETF, 
As I told you earlier, you will pay some small taxes from the dividend income that you will receive from those companies. But judging by the insane good performance of this ETF on the last five years of about 11% on average per year, this could for sure help you to offset the small taxes that you could have to pay. This high performance was also helped by the super small fees of this ETF that are only of about 0.09% which represent about $9 per $10,000 invest in that fund. And once again, this ETF is giving some quality distribution to its holders. My third pick that could be interesting for you to put in your TFSA is another Canadian fund that is focused this time on Canadian high dividend companies. Obviously, I'm talking about the Vanguard Canadian High Dividend Yield Index ETF with the ticker VDY. And as its name is saying it, this ETF tracks the performance of an index composed of high yield dividend companies that are obviously in Canada. It is why you can find companies as the big Canadian banks, Enbridge, Suncor and Bell in the biggest holdings of this ETF. And this time, the financial sector represents more than 50% of this fund with the energy sector coming at the second place with about 25% of the ETF. So compared to the first ETF that I've shared with you that had a wider exposure to the Canadian market, this one only has about 47 companies within this fund. Keep in mind that those are the highest dividend yield companies that you can find here in Canada. But since the dividends tax imposition is way higher here as I shared with you earlier of about 138% compared to only 50% of the income earned by the dividends that are taxable. That means that if you receive a dividend of about $500, you would be taxed on $690 as the dividend. But if you receive that same $500 in capital gain, that means that you will be taxed on $250. So by holding it in your TFSA, you won't be taxed at all on the dividend income that you're making. And this ETF also have some great fee of only about 0.22% per year, which present about $22 per $10,000 invest. On five years, you would have return on average of about 8% per year. But even if you would have returned less compared to the S&P 500 ETF, as you can see since the beginning of the year, because of all the different risks that currently occur on the market, you would have had a better return compared to this other ETF. And obviously, this is due to the fact that this ETF is way less risky. And finally, for my last pick, I've went with the Vanguard FTSC Cap Rate Index ETF with the ticker VRE. This ETF has the objective to track an index composed of real estate Canadian companies that are publicly traded. So if you're looking to have some real estate exposure to your portfolio without having to take too much risk and to put a lot of money on the table, that could be a great ETF for you. In fact, you could find some great Canadian real estate companies in this ETF, just like Smart Center, Granite, the Canadian Apartment Properties, and Ryokan. And as you can see, there is a great balance among those REITs between the industrials, the offices, and the residential sectors. And you have one big pro by holding those Canadian REITs in your TFSC. In fact, the structure of REITs is pretty simple. They have to distribute about 90% of their total income to their shareholders in the form of dividends, which means that they are also offering some higher dividends compared to the usual companies. And if you remember well what I told to you earlier, higher dividends mean also higher taxation. And this could be seen with the great 4% of quarterly distribution to their holders. And despite the hard time that the real estate market has seen since the beginning of the year, the 18 stocks in that ETF have returned on average of about 5% per year. All of this with some mere fees of only about 0.38% per year, which represent about $38 per $10,000 invest. This could be a great ETF to have some great tax efficiency by also having some great exposure to the real estate market in Canada. So as I shared with you in this video, there are plenty of different ETFs that can help you to maximize your TFSA. And I haven't even talked about the different American dividend ETFs like SCHD that could be another great option for your portfolio. But in fact, if you want to see all the different other ETFs that could be a great addition to your portfolio in any kind of different accounts, well, check out the video that's going to be right over here that will share with you the best ETFs to grow your capital on the long term.
And for everyone that is new, make sure to join the North family by subscribing to the channel for only $0.0, .0 and I will see you soon. Peace!